Hello everybody, my name is Juan Lopez and I will be talking about the history on Mars Incorporated. So the founder of Mars Incorporated was Frank C. Mars, but he couldn't get really started without the help of William Wergley Jr. He was basically the first investor for Mars Incorporated. By 1902, Frank C. Mars was selling uh, chips at the age of 19, and that's how he kind of got started. Soon he started to decide to invent uh, his own products. By 1911, uh, Frank started to sell uh, buttercream candy that he made. Little did he know this was the first Milky Way. <laughs> In 1914, Mars and Wergley partner up. And then because of that being partnered up, they start to mass produce uh, the buttercream candy as well introduce a new product, which was called, it's a mouth, uh, it's going to be a mouthful, the double strength peppermint flavored double wrapped, always fresh and clean. That was the name of the candy, uh, the first gum they made. By 1920, he bought a uh, building and he, it was the first foundation for the Nugget House. And then from there, he was um, mass producing all these candies in a, in a single little house. By 1922, the first name for his company was called Mar O Bar. And this was one of the first advertisements that he has from the Mar O Bar of the, of the buttercream candy. So pretty soon, the classics were going to be started to introduce. By, by 1923, he created the Milky Way Bar. 1929, the business got so big that he had to move his company to Chicago. And also, this was also a crucial, mo crucial moment that F Forrest E. Mars joined the business. And who that is, is basically the first son he uh, Frank had. So this is uh, the moment where F Mars Incorporated became only a uh, family lineage. Soon after, in 1930, Sneakers was introduced. 1932, Three Musketeers was also introduced. Unfortunately, on 1934, Frank C. Mars has passed away and Forrest has taken over the company. This, was, uh, this is what uh, leads to uh, Mars Incorporated to become more sustainable. Because not only they were just focusing on candy, they also wanted to make food products for animals, specifically cats. So he, by 1939, cat food was introduced um, under the Mars, Mars brand. Pretty soon, World War II has started. In 1941, the first M&Ms was, was introduced, but it only was sold to U.S. military personnel only. The reason why was so they can have candy with them without melting. And that was one of the, like, the best-selling things about it. Pretty soon... To uh, 1942, Mars started to go into the food business by making rice and other products such as beans uh, soon after. Pretty soon, uh, M&M's was not going to be sold to the public whatsoever. After the war was almost ending, they thought about ending the M&M's line. But they decided to keep it. In 1945, M&M's was now selling to the public so anybody can get their hands on. So as I mentioned earlier... Uh, they started to dig into the world of uh, pets, uh, like food for pets. So pretty soon, uh, 1954, they just uh, not discovered, uh, invented a new uh, food product called Pals, and that was dog food. And then pretty soon, 1955, Mars started to partner up with other companies such as vending machines, so their their candies and and pet products could be sold in, in multiple stores. In 1965, a pet research uh, opens up under the bar, bar bar's name. So pretty much, their sustainability grew not just on people but to also pets. Here we have a facility uh, specifically dedicated to doing research and how we can feed our pets with healthier and nutritious uh, food. And not only is it also a research facility, but it's also a a, a vet. So there's also a hospital for um, for our pets. And then pretty soon, the rest is history. Now we have all these like popular candies. And all of this is usually under the branch of Mars. 
So that is the end of my side of the presentation. I'm going to pass it on to Samantha. Have a good one. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Sindahaz and I just wanted to thank Juan for that great introduction and today I'm going to be talking about the sustainability plan of Mars Incorporation. So let's get right into it. There's going to be four main parts I'm going to be talking about. The greenhouse gas emission, the water use, land management, and packaging. So first we're going to be talking about the greenhouse plan. This is a very important and big deal to this corporation because it is something that they collaborate with scientists with to help navigate and create a plan and basically the main goal is to try to avoid any global, global consequences. Um, this helps to lessen the increase of temperatures and irregular climate change and Mars Bars Incorporation is just trying to limit the amount of GHG gas in all across all chains. So they have very specific goals and um, by 2025 they are hoping to get a 27% decrease in this gas and by 2050 they hope to get a 67% decrease. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is their water use. And so Mars Bars Incorporation practices water stewardship and this basically is a water management that is basically um, just trying to limit the amount of water that they use uh, in their irrigation system and um, the most important factor about this is that they actually use recycled water so they actually have a storage on fields that like contains all the water that is being uh, used in the crops and then it is filtering and reusing it um, for future irrigation and this really has gotten them to the place where they want to be and has really allowed them to reach their goals. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is their land management. And so the farmers use uh, raw materials and this has really um, impacted the quality of the soil which is obviously good for the environment and um, um, the, a really unique thing about Mars Bars Incorporation is their plan and their efforts to help um, global issues. So. Um, Mars Bar has also collaborated with this company to tap with other companies to tackle forest loss linked to cocoa production. In November of 2017, they endorsed a cocoa and forest initiative pledge to end deforestation um, that started in um, Ghana. And this is a really unique thing and something that I've never seen in other um, companies, and it's very unique to them, and they're very passionate about glo other global issues. So next is going to be packaging, and so Mars Bars Incorporation has this message that goes, there's no such thing as a sustainable product in an unsustainable packaging. And I thought that was really unique because they're clearly showing that they not only care about the product that the consumers are consuming, but they also care about the packaging and the exterior of that product and where it's ending. Their mission is to track those areas and to make sure that it doesn't end up in oceans. Um, so I thought that that was really unique and I know that they are trying to achieve 100% of their plastic packaging to be reusable. Along with that, they're really pushing for um, not using virgin plastic, which is obviously not re uh, recycled. And it's something that's really unique to their company and I thought that that was really nice that, you know, even in such a simple thing like a candy bar, they're really focused on the wrapping and the packaging and where it's ending up and it just really helps tie the whole thing together because at the end of the day they're putting so much effort into making these products um, with the sustainability in the back of their minds you know being the number one part of their company um, pushing them forward and then to just tie it all together with this packaging I thought was really unique and really nice um, so that's going to be it for the portion of the sustainability. I'm going to pass it off to my fellow team member to continue on the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Now we're going to talk about the benefits and drawbacks for Mars Inc.'s sustainability plans. The benefits. So they have realized that many people tend to go towards now eco-friendly anything about just anything in order to help the planet improve our climate change and as well as recycle more and that has helped businesses a lot a lot of people decide to invest in businesses like that so mars inc company has decided to become one of those companies 
they now are trying to become very eco-friendly with their wrappers because you know the chocolate bars wrappers are now able to be recycled but they're now trying to get them to be biodegradable they're hoping to do that by in 2022 and they have invested one billion dollars as well in reducing the greenhouse like their own company greenhouses gas because a lot of smoke damages our climate change and even though it's not a big significant change they're doing their best to help improve they hope to reduce it by 27 percent in 2025 and they're also have donated to female empower initiatives they're trying to become more close with people we're making sure that they know that they are supporting minorities women people like they're trying to be active as well as the economic development they're also helping poor like people that need houses the homeless they're doing their best and health as well they have invested in health um they haven't really decided specific on the health issues but they are investing money in sciences and projects that seem important and urgent for people and also the environmental research they are trying to become really really big and do their part in helping the world and helping reduce waste and so we can live longer in the planet and they're also working on transparency they've noticed that um in order to keep their company alive they have noticed that transparency is one of the main things that people tend to look towards um like finding companies because the more transparent a company is the more trusting and reliable they are so they are trying to become more transparent they hope to show like charts data and, and explain more stuff to people by 2022 as well um they are doing their best and all of this is all to stay relevant to stay current with the times and to make sure that people know they are helping the environment they're helping the planet and they do this for the sustainability of their products and their company but as well as for the planet and the people the drawbacks it's expensive, $1 billion to invest in all of the summer, and those were just some of the things mentioned, the benefits. Investing $1 billion is expensive. It has given a drawback in their company. They believe it's worth it, though. They say we'll show um, the benefits later on in later years, even though the benefit will be slower to show up. It will be worth it. So they decided that $1 billion was fine to invest but it was did take a toll on their company it did take a toll on their like production and everything it did take a toll a big toll on their company but one of also the drawbacks is deforestation that they have they use cocoa beans in order to make chocolates candy bars and all of that and that has become really big. Two thirds the deforestation comes from Africa. That's where the cocoa beans come from. And the issue is they're planting, they're not planting any trees to replace the trees being cut down. They're just cutting and cutting but not replacing. And that is affecting the climate. And that's also hurting the environment around them, the ecosystem, the animals, they have no place to go. And even though they have claimed since 2017 that they were helping fix the deforestation problem, they have made no changes and no improvements. There have been no talk about those plans ever since they've mentioned it. So that is one of the drawbacks in their companies. And also, if they keep cutting and cutting for the cocoa beans, where are they going to get cocoa beans after that if they're not planting any trees to replace it? Because it's two-thirds that come from Africa. And the raw materials are a necessity to the company so that's one of their drawbacks and even though the but the drawback can be fixed they can invest money in planting more trees but they haven't mentioned anything about it and now we'll be passing it on to Nathan thanks Heidi indeed the sustainability plan of this particular company, Mars Inc., has indeed had both pros and cons. 
but they also have future plans, which I, which I'm going to discuss. More specifically, a single future plan that stands out. Their future plan is improving gender gender equality in the first place. These two, these two links above lead to articles about news about this gender equality plan. Their main thing. Their main thing is to improve worker relations, make sure everyone, including both male and female, are both are both treated equally within the workplace. For example, also they make sure but I do, this is a great idea for future plans, mainly because during this whole craziness things, it'll improve worker relations. It'll help support, support more people into coming into, into a job like this. And it'll help, it won't, it'll help their stock, it probably won't hurt their stock prices either. Um, and doing so will make sure that the people work hard, work harder and make sure things are healthy within the environment. Their own, this plan will definitely benefit, benefit the company very well. It'll help. It will indeed help many, the company. Like I say before, it will help also improve work relations by treating each other equal they'll it'll inspire people to work to work more closely together and it will also help people to understand each other within the workplace by treating each other equally and and by understanding both equity and equality within the place now I would like to to take, I would like to move this on to my, to my group member Angel, who will be discussing the effects of COVID nineteen, within within, and how it affected them. How it affected the company, both, both, both in the positive and negative way. All right, Angel, you have the spotlight in this case. Thank you. Class, my name is Angel Gonzalez, and this is the last final section for our group project. In this final section, I'll be talking about how COVID affected Mars Inc. in these past couple of months. Within the next couple of slides, I'll be showing you some negatives and some positives that have gone on throughout the company in the past couple of months. And without further ado, let's get right into the first slide. All right, so COVID response. Obviously, Mars Inc. is a very, very famous company. I mean, maybe not a lot of people know about Mars Inc., but everybody knows the candy empire that they have built from Snickers, M&M to Twix. I mean, we all eat these chocolates, so this is where those chocolates come from, from Mars Inc. Um, so, major, major company. I mean, Mars Inc. never really struggled throughout this time. I mean, their, their empire is worth... 89.7 billion dollars that's a lot of money so they have a lot of money to spare so uh, I don't really think they struggle during this time I mean a billion dollar company company like this I mean what they could do is they could give back and that's exactly what they did that's exactly what they did during this time but during the road there was also some rough patches and you know their co-workers were not really pleased you know because Many of them did not want to go to work. Um, they were not. They were not happy with the way they were being treated. Many of the many of many of the workers were very, <clears throat> very unhappy that their PTO, their sick time, um, all the hours that they accumulated, were just taken away, and they were just kind of forced to use them because if they were not going to use them, then I mean, 
they were not going to get paid. So I guess Marzine could have been a little bit more organized when it came to treating their coworkers better. That would have been a better way to go about doing things. But at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> yeah, this was one of the negative things that happened throughout the past couple of months. Mars Inc. Mars Inc. co-workers were not happy with the way that they that Mars Inc. well just pretty much adapted to the to the COVID response, right? And you know, they could have treated things better, but they didn't. Some of the positive things that Mars Inc. did through the throughout the throughout the pandemic was uh, Mars Inc. committed twenty million dollars to communities in COVID response. $20 million just to like help people and communities most affected by COVID. So just a couple of facts where this money came, where this money went. So 5 million went to support pets and communities most affected by COVID. And along those lines, experts around the world were deployed to refugee countries to help out other people around the world know to help stop the spread of covid so i didn't even know about this till i'm you know further doing further research and you know along the way of doing this project uh, two million donations to the united nations world food program so that was really beneficial and a million dollars to human society international to help dogs and pets to help dogs and cats i mean all around the world or in the united states mostly um, you know, dogs that were abandoned, um, that couldn't be taken care of because of the pandemic, or just things of that. Because along th during the pandemic, it was said that um, that dogs, I mean, could carry COVID. So I mean, I guess that's a, that's one of the reasons that I guess people just were just you know what I don't want to keep my dog, so they just left them stray, they left them on the streets. And yeah, pretty much to wrap it up, like I said, Mars Inc. was a very, 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 very wealthy, wealthy company. Um, I mean, the biggest can can candy empire in the world. There's no other company like Mars Inc. They're a billion dollar company. So it wasn't really much of a struggle during these times. It was more of how could they give back? How could they... How could they help other people? How could they help people that needed needed supplies, needed, you know, care, needed food, things of that nature. But yeah, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed our presentation. I really hope you guys have had a well or have tried to have a good semester. This is, this is pretty much the last couple of weeks. And I mean, we're pretty much done, guys. We've got to finish this up and yeah. And that will be the final present the final say to this presentation thank you guys